listened to the memo, which by the way was 100% correct. Um, and so Stephen Harper quit reform. He didn't quit, he actually wanted to quit. Um, uh, he was not even going to run in 1993 in, in Calgary. He, uh, he had decided to quit, and the only person in the world who could talk him into doing it was Joe Harper, his dad. And so my friend said, this is a man who's constitutionally capable of deferring to authority. He just can't do it. And I'm like, you're absolutely right, over and over and over again. It took him six years to get an MA. Now, he's a pretty smart guy, and he was doing other things, but six years to do an MA? This guy has a problem with professors who aren't. Um, and so I called a couple friends, and, and actually, uh, it was Ward Shaw, who I had given him the job in Edmonton. He said, that's funny, I remember Stephen telling me once, I simply can't stand taking orders. And that should have destroyed him. We all have to take orders. We all have to defer to authority. We all have bosses, and some bosses are idiots, and they tell us what to do, and we do it anyway. Uh, that's how we get along. But he could never do it. He kept quitting. He kept running away, because he could not stand um, authority. And it should have destroyed him. But remarkably, it didn't destroy him. In fact, it led him into the one job in the country where nobody tells you what to do. The Prime Ministership. Of course, and the irony of it is, Stephen Harper would never hire Stephen Harper. He would never tolerate the kind of insubordination that he was guilty of himself when he was a subordinate. That's a remarkable achievement when you think about it, that he was able to, uh, to persevere. But of course, it is also a mark of the government. Um, and so we have one question I get asked is, what do you think of the government? Well, I talk about the six big things that I did, that I think for the most part positive. I have order agenda but I'm totally um, down with the uh, trade agenda. I think the reorientation of foreign policy, while it has flaws, uh, was overdue. Um, I, the fiscal footprint has declined to where it was in the days of John Biefenbaker. Perfectly fine by me. Um, I think Mackenzie Bowles we should perhaps aspire to, but I'll take Biefenbaker. And, um, uh, and, and general economic management of the country has been, by the lights of most empirical observers who aren't grinding one act to another, um, in, uh, quite competent. By the way, as I say in the book, the great blessing of Canada is that we've had about 30 years of very good government at the federal level. We just do not give credit enough to the politicians at the federal level for how well they have governed Canada. We do not give Brian Mooney, Mooney credit for uh, negotiating free trade in the United States and imposing the GST, which was needed to fix the structural deficit. We um, owe great, uh, a great debt to the French and, uh, and Martin uh, team, who, who eliminated the deficit, brought Canada onto a very virtuous circle, uh, cycle of, 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 of budget surpluses. And we owe credit to Stephen Harper and Jim Flaherty, who, when confronted with the first really serious economic crisis to test this new order, got the country through it in good shape. So those are all things that I think he's done well. But there are an awful lot of things he's done badly too, and I talk about them, I talk about the fight with the Supreme Court, I talk about the stupid um, foolishness of his, uh, of his, of his alienating uh, President of the United States, Barack Obama. Oh, by the way, who do you think are they about the only two people on earth that the Prime Minister of Canada is in one way or another subordinate to? How about the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and the President of the United States? How well, how well does, does uh, Stephen Harper get along with those two? And of course, there's, there's the question of, uh, of, of the, the nature of the government. I look at it in several ways and in several parts of the book. Uh, and it boils down to what I believe is the accusation that the government is autocratic, secretive, and cruel. Is the government autocratic, secretive, and cruel? And in answering it, because I, I spent a lot of time answering it, um, and the, the short answer is sometimes, sometimes not. Um, sometimes what you call autocratic, secretive, and cruel, a conservative calls conservative. Um, but whatever it is, it is the manifestation of the personality of the Prime Minister, because Stephen Harper does embody the government. Um, I'll, I'll read you just two uh, quick excerpts about, about this. One, of course, is this introversion and how it manifests itself in a distrust of anyone outside the very tiny circle uh, that Stephen Harper feels comfortable with. From his boyhood in Leeside, Harper learned not to trust those beyond the inner circle of family and close friends. 
That circle is not much larger today. Relations with those outside the wall can be cordial, but they are rarely based on implicit trust, an emotional resource that Harper invests in only a very few. And his encyclopedic memory includes not only the history of maritime border disputes, by the way, he just loves to go on with maritime border disputes, or who started what film. It also includes every act by every person who has slighted, offended, or betrayed him. Such acts are never forgiven and only rarely, or never forgotten and only rarely forgiven. Stephen Harper holds grudges. But it remains the unalterable fact that the face of Stephen Harper's government is Stephen Harper's face. That face is stern and cold. It is also intelligent and perceptive. Yes, it can be cruel, but I do not believe that Stephen Harper is, at his core, a cruel man, just a very tough one. And it led to the last most interesting question that I was asked um, in, the, in the sort of three weeks since the book first went on sale. Um, it was a, a, a radio interview. I can't remember. I think it was in Vancouver. And the, um, uh, the journalist asking me said, do you like it? It never crossed my mind to ask myself the question, do you like it? And uh, my first answer was, I think, the correct one. I said, well, yeah, if I spent three years of my life chronicling somebody I hated, I wouldn't be a very nice person, would I? Um, and I think, yes, I took some email and said, well, what about all the guys who did Hitler? But well, all right, there's a, you're forgiven for not liking Stalin and Mao and Hitler. But if you're going to write a biography of Steve Harper, um, you should probably have some positive feelings about it. But it's not that I like Stephen Harper. It's that I like politicians. I've always liked politicians. I like conservative politicians. I like liberal politicians. I like NDP politicians. Um, I just find them a fascinating race. They um, have all the flaws that we know politicians have. Um, by the way, they tend to be the same flaws that journalists have as well. Um, but uh, their, their motives are, in the end, virtuous. And if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't cover politicians. I don't, I, there are lots of very fine journalists whose job it is to hold politicians to account and get underneath uh, what's going on and, and get to the truth of it. But there need to be a couple of journalists around. I would say, I don't know, three? Um, who think that for all of that, we need to also reinforce what's positive in liberal democratic society uh, in Canada and elsewhere. And anyway, I just like politicians. And I'm going to do something, Aaron's going to be appalled by this, because it's the worst spoiler that you can possibly do. I'm going to read the last two paragraphs of the book. Um, this does not in any way, I should think, make it unnecessary for you to read the previous 398 pages. But it encapsulates the answer to the question, do you like it? Though politicians can be weak and vain and greedy, most of them seek office hoping to leave things in better shape than they found them. Stephen Harper can be weak and vain and greedy, but I believe that he sought office hoping to leave things in better shape than he found them, and that he has in the main succeeded. I believe he has governed well. But he has also at times governed badly, undermining the census, getting offside with the Americans, attacking the judiciary, eroding the powers of Parliament. Someone's going to have to fix that. Above all, he governed as a conservative as best he could. He made government mean less in your life. That's all he really wanted to do. As for the man, well, he is who he is. Perhaps now we know better why. Thank you.